Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today is going to be a little bit different. Today I'm out in the country, I'm smelling fresh cut grass and spring flowers and mostly horses and that's because today I'm at My Lady's Manor steeplechase races um, out here where Baltimore County and Hartford County meet. And today we're going to talk about My Lady's Manor and about steeplechase racing. Uh, but first let me say a quick thanks to PNC Bank. They are not the sponsors of today's video. They've sponsored videos of ours in the past, but today they've got an enormous tent with lunch in it and gave me a ticket to join them. So thanks so much. All right, let's start with My Lady's Manor. My Lady's Manor is a tract of land, a swath of land, uh, about 10,000 acres uh, that was a gift from Charles Calvert, the third Lord Baltimore, to his fourth wife, Margaret, back in 1713. Now, Charles was not the Lord Baltimore that founded the colony of Maryland. That was his father, George. Uh, George George Calvert, the first Lord Baltimore, he got a gift from uh, King uh, George the first of the uh, of the colony of Maryland. Uh, but then something bad happened. George died. The first Lord Baltimore died before he could set foot in Maryland or even really get things going. When he died, his son Cecil Calvert, the second Lord Baltimore, took over, and he's the one who got things going. He's the one who uh, put English settlers on the Ark and the Dove and sent them over to Maryland as our first uh, English colonists. Incidentally, on, the, on those boats were both Catholics and Protestants, which was highly unusual for the day. We in Maryland, in fact, adopted the first uh, laws of religious toleration. They didn't go as far as we'd want them to today, but they were the first of their kind here in the colonies. Um, but back to My Lady's Manor, um, uh, Cecil uh, never stepped foot on uh, the shores of Maryland either, but his son did, Charles. Um, Charles came here in the mid-1600s, essentially as like a deputy governor. Um, and was doing quite well until 1675 when his father died and he decided he needed to go back to England to defend his title. And so he left Maryland uh, never to return again. But before he did, he set aside the, these 10,000 acres to keep as his own, not to parcel out. Fast forward to 1713 and he's on his fourth wife. Unfortunately, his first three died either in childbirth or of disease. Uh, but to his fourth wife, this older gentleman, uh, older Lord, gives this really nice present present of uh, these 10,000 acres and calls it My Lady's Manor. Um, all right, we're going to have to uh, fast forward a little bit to the American Revolution, uh, 1776. Uh, we won. One of the consequences for the British was we confiscated a lot of lands, including here at My Lady's Manor. We gave them to Revolutionary War veterans and auctioned them out uh, to tenants, former tenants of the um, uh, Calvert family. And today, uh, My Lady's Manor is not one tract of land, but a load attracts a land. There has been some development over the last 200 years. Uh, Charlottetown became Moncton uh, for one thing, but remarkably uh, this area has retained its rural flavor. It's got fields and forests and streams just like it did 300 years ago. Um, in large part that's due today to a group called My Lady's Manor Conservancy that works hard to keep it uh, keep it rural. All right that's My Lady's Manor. How about steeplechase racing? If you're familiar with Preakness or Pimlico and Preakness, um, you've got the right animal, but the wrong race. If Preakness is kind of like a, uh, a kingly uh, stateliness to it, uh, here these steeplechases are more like uh, sort of hectic unpredictability and a whole lot of fun. They got their start back in 1752 in County Cork, Ireland. Uh, two gentlemen, a gentleman named uh, Cornelius O'Callaghan and Edmund uh, Blake, were eating dinner at a place called Buttevent Bud Castle. I hope I'm pronouncing that kind of right. Uh, and they were apparently having a good time. Lots of good food, lots of good wine. And what better way to end the day than by getting on your horse and racing four miles across fields and streams, I think crossing even one river, uh, and putting a wager on it. And that's exactly what they did. They raced between the two tallest structures uh, that they could see. One was St. John's Church in Bud Event. That's where they started at the steeple there. And they raced uh, four miles to St. Mary's in Donnerale uh, steeple. And the first person to touch the base of the steeple won. And the prize was 600 gallons of port. Um, so they were having a good time, but they were pretty serious too, I guess. Um, remarkably, both riders made it. Neither of them died en route. Uh, but sadly, history does not record 
record uh, who won, but that race got steeplechasing uh, going back in 1752. The English soon adopted it and started putting up uh, fences in their oval racetracks, so the horses would have to jump over those on the way to the finish line. And then, of course, today it spread all over the world. It's even an Olympic sport, so the next Summer Olympics, you can uh, you can check it out. The races here got started at My Lady's Manor in 1902, kind of with the same bravado. A uh, number of young men uh, were, were trying to figure out who had the best jumping horse. You'll recognize some of their names. Uh, John Street, Street, Maryland, Walter Hutchins, and then a bunch of Pierce's, Harry Pierce, J.M. Pierce, and Charles Pierce. Um, they uh, determined to settle who had the best by racing, and uh, off they went, and off started the cheap steeplechase tradition here. Um, all right, I'm going to conclude. Uh, the PNC lunch tent is waiting. I haven't been there yet, and I'm dying to uh, see what it's got, and I don't even know which horses are here. So I'm going to conclude with, uh, with one, share one thought, is that while at least one person in this crowd, me, is watching the horses jump over fences and hedges and over streams, uh, that one person is going to be at least a little bit thinking about uh, Charles uh, Calvert uh, and his great gift to his wife, Margaret, um, and then our two Irish friends in County Cork who got this whole thing started. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.